Berger up by one over, or Bo Hostler up by one over Daniel Berger. Deja vu for Berger with consecutive rounds of 65. And after signing for that second straight 65, he spoke with Todd Lewis. Yeah, Daniel, first 36 holes, no bogeys, seven under par yesterday, seven under par today. What did you bring to Mississippi these last two days? I am uh, just trying to have some fun and enjoy myself, and um, it seems to be working so far. And, you know, my dad was out here earlier with me this week, so it just felt kind of like a normal week at home, and that's usually when I play my best. You've had some health challenges over the last few years, your wrist, mm -hmm. more recently your back. Where are you right now with your body? This is probably the first time I can actually honestly say I'm 100%. Like, even I've played, you know, whatever, 20 times this year, started in January, and, like, there's always that thought in the back of your head, like, am I good? Like, can I swing as hard as I want? And the last couple of weeks, I've really felt my best, and I've played a bunch of golf at home with the guys, and I'm hitting it further, and I'm just, just feeling like myself more. So um, that's kind of translating into what I'm seeing now. How challenging has it been for you to find the fun again, giving everything you've gone through? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, it was extremely difficult. And like I was saying earlier, the fact that, you know, the landscape of the golf world has changed from when I took time off to where I am now. Like, you know, the tournaments that I'm in, I'm, I wasn't in, you know, this year, what I would have been in before. So I'm playing new events that I've never played before, going to places that I haven't added on my schedule. Um, changing golf coaches, new caddies, like you just add all this change in and it just becomes challenging. So I've really just kind of tried to dig in and um, just be patient and just enjoy the process. And like I said, when you miss two years, you, you don't come back, you know, and see immediate success. It can be challenging, but now I'm just having fun and that's when I play my best. Been a long journey for Daniel Berger, not only to get back to what he says close to 100%, but just to get back on the PGA Tour. So remember, he got his fourth win on tour. This was three and a half years ago. AT&T, Pebble Beach, Pro-Am. Hurt his back the end of 2021. This was right after making his Ryder Cup debut. Then in the summer of 22, missed the cut at the U.S. Open. Did not play again the rest of 2022 and 23. Had a bulging disc in his lower back. Berger avoided surgery, but it was a long rehab process and his first start in the PGA Tour was the American Express back in January. And you see currently second now in the Sanderson Farms Championship. His last top 10 was a T5 at the Memorial in 2022. Hasn't had a top 20 finish so far this season. So the question for most of the year, Rolf, had been how long do we have to give Berger before we can accurately grade his return? But hearing him say just over the past couple weeks he's 100%. Seems like reason for optimism. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm optimistic. You know, that, that though, might be a little bit of a stretch. 100% is 100%. It's not 99, <laughs> it's 100. Uh, you know, he's not been in this position for a long time. He has not been in the top 10 after 36 holes of a PGA Tour event since 2022, and that was at the Honda Classic. And if you remember there, he had a five-shot lead and kind of coughed it up. Uh, so a bad memory there, but he's had all kinds of injury problems besides his back, which has been very painful for him, hasn't been able to do much at all in normal life. But he also tore a labrum in his shoulder riding a bike. Uh, you know, he's had knee issues. He's had wrist issues. His body uh, has just been ravaged literally with injuries. But he could have been a superstar. There's no doubt about it. And it was interesting. He made the comment that he has missed the last two years of golf and missed a lot, including all those rich live contracts. I'm sure he's thinking, but um, it's great to have him back. And uh, I'd love to see him hold up, maybe not win this weekend, but at least have a good finish. The guy that's uh, top him on the leaderboard, Bo Hostler, who's at 15 under par. We've seen Bo in his career. He can be like a quarter horse where he gets off to these fast starts through 36 holes. I think this is the sixth time he's either had the lead or been right there at the top of the board, still looking for that first win on the PGA Tour. So what's held him back when he's gotten to this spot, the final 36? What really has held him back, and I, and I can't figure out the exact reason, is Saturdays, the third round. He has all kinds of problems with the third round. He has been in the top five of the PGA Tour going into Saturday seven times now since 2022. That's a lot. You said six times he's, he's had a chance really to win. Uh, but in those seven times, his combined scoring average for the Saturday round after that was plus five. That is a big number. So he's not playing well on Saturday. I don't know whether he puts too much pressure on himself going out there. 
But uh, hopefully tomorrow will be a different kind of Saturday for Bo Hosler. Yeah, we'll see uh, what's in store as the guys have been going really low this week in Jackson, Mississippi, with that cut at six under, the lowest we've seen since the tournament moved there uh, nearly a decade ago. So over the last couple of years, there have been a number of title sponsors who have dropped longstanding partnerships on the PGA Tour. Honda had 40-plus years as a title sponsor. Wells Fargo, just to name a couple. Sanderson Farms, also a company that was in flux when it came to their PGA Tour sponsorship. That was until today. With more on this story, let's send it to Todd Lewis. Announced that this week's tournament will be their final edition as the title sponsor for the PGA Tour stop in Jackson, Mississippi, igniting fear that indeed the tour may not be back here next year. But in a surprising reversal, executives from Sanderson Farms announced officially today that indeed they will be the title sponsor, Sanderson Farms, once again in 2025, meaning that the PGA Tour will be back here next year. I mean, this is great, right, to extend a long-term partner one more year. Uh, means a lot to the community, to the to the Children's Hospital, what we're trying to do for charity. I mean, the economic impact of this tournament is close to $30 million. Um, we're going to exceed $25 million as a host organization this year. Uh, it just, it means all the world. I know not only Children's of Mississippi, but all the smaller charities that benefit from the tournament too. So it's, uh, it's really exciting for all of us to know that. There were some unknowns entering next year. How much of a relief is it now to have Sanderson back in the fold? Yeah, can you see it on my face? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a huge relief. And I, when I told the staff this, you know, earlier, um, they were relieved too. I mean, it's, you know, we really kind of start on any tournament director would tell you, you start planning for the next year, even before we have this one, right? So, you know, you're always tweaking and changing things. So to be able to start Monday on what we're going to do next year means that kind of we're not in limbo and we can go ahead and make plans on 2025. So that's, that's, it's really, really cool. Sanderson Farms has been the title sponsor for this event in Mississippi since 2013. And during that time, this tournament has raised $17 million for local charities. 13 of that $17 million going to Children's Hospital of Mississippi. And you may be thinking, why just a one-year deal for 2025? Well, there is uncertainty in regards to what the game of golf will look like beyond 25 with the continuing negotiations going on between the PGA Tour and the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia.